Welcome back to Outdoor Adventures, everybody. My name is Joanna and today we're going to be walking around camp taking a look at some of the trees, uh, how you can tell them apart from the different kinds, and how you're going to be able to identify them when you go for a walk with your family. Let's go! So check this one out. This one is cool because it is what I believe to be the biggest tree in all of camp. It's a great white pine, also known as just white pine or eastern white pine. It's over nine feet in circumference, which means that it's over three feet in diameter. If your kids are into math, they can do the fun math of measuring the circumference, dividing it by pi, and that's the diameter of the tree. If you have find a really big tree and you have your family around with you, if you know what everybody's arm span is, you can try and measure it just by hugging the tree. Um, or you can just bring a measuring tape with you, but that's kind of a fun thing to do is figure out how big actually are these trees. To figure out how old a tree is, it's really hard to tell unless you just chop it down and count the rings because how much growth it has during a year is dependent on, on the weather, on the rain, on the conditions. These trees are known to live up to 800 years. <laughs> just based on the height of the tree, being 150 feet tall, that's probably right in the middle of its height range, so maybe right in the middle of its age range as well. So you can tell um, the pine trees apart based on their needles as well as the bark. It might seem like all of this is one bunch, but if you look really closely at it, you can see that there are sort of little packs of needles, and each of these will have only five in them. One of the many things you guys might already know about your trees is that you can count how old they are by the rings. Um, because trees will grow more in the spring and less in the fall, there is a darker part and a lighter part to each of their growing seasons. The darker part is where it is a little bit more dense and compact, meaning it's growing slowly, whereas the light part is where it's growing fast and rapidly. The light and the dark together make up one ring, and you can count how old a tree is if you have a cookie slab like this. 50. 50 years old, this tree. <laughs> so this one here is a red pine, and you can tell not only because there's sort of a reddish color underneath the flaky bark, but because of its needles. This one always has uh, little needle clumps in only pairs, whereas the grape pine has those packets of five needles. The bark on the different birch trees might look similar if you're not looking carefully enough. So this yellow birch, you can see the way that it's peeling off is kind of very thin, very thin strips. Uh, it almost looks shredded, and it does have more of a bronzy color to it. That's one of the ways you can tell yellow birch apart from paper birch. You will always see a lot of birch on the ground because they're very short-lived trees, especially compared to other trees. They only live for maybe about 150, in between 100 and 150 years. You can also see on this one how it differs from that yellow birch. It's coming off in these big, scrolly chunks, much thicker. There are other types of birch trees. There's river birch and sweet birch. However, these are the two most common in, in our area and the two most easy to identify. So these dark triangles are branch scars where they've lost their lower branches, and they're called chevrons. And that zigzag pattern, where you just have a bunch of zigzag lines stacked on top of each other, so this is kind of after that, all these little triangles where it lost branches. One thing that might be fun if you're going out on a hike and you're talking about trees with your kids is to do sort of like a scavenger hunt. I kind of gather a few different things, let everybody look at them for a minute, <laughs> they have to memorize them, then try and go find the same ones. Um, and so what you're looking for on these leaves is how the sinuses are shaped. The sinus is that area in between the different lobes. The sinuses on this sugar maple leaf are used, um, and that differentiates them from other types of maples. Um, a lot of them will have like a very sharp V in that sinus, and so that's one of the ways you can tell them apart. One of the other things that I would be looking at if I was playing that game, trying to figure out the differences between leaves, make sure I collect the right ones, is whether or not the margins are smooth or jagged. This hazelnut leaf uh, shows some really clear, jagged, edged margins. The veination of leaves, where the veins lie, is also different. Some of them, they'll always start from the center and radiate outwards. Sometimes 
Other types of leaves will have a, a swooping nature to them that follow the outline of the leaf. This one is sumac, but I picked this leaf because it's a good example of a compound leaf. So you might think that each of these are individual leaves. Actually, this entire thing is one leaf. Any tree identification like books that you might have would separate like trees with different types of leaves. They'll be single or compound like this. So here we have a spruce tree make really good Christmas trees. So a spruce tree is a conifer, uh, and that means it's cone bearing. It means it has needles. Uh, and typically conifers will keep their needles all year round, but there are some species of conifer uh, which do not. So cones are not true fruit, but they are the carriers of seeds for conifers. Um, and they do make uh, great food for a lot of animals in the forest. So our verse today is Luke 6, 43 through 45. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So we've learned a lot about the different types of fruit from these trees, um, and it's a good time for us to think about what is the fruit in our lives? Uh, what can we recognize? And if it's not good, then we know what to do about that. We need to go to the Lord. Get outside, go to the Lord, use these trees as a reminder. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we'll see you next time. <music>